Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Our guest of the day, Michael Howard, was of course Home Secretary under John Major. And if there is one phrase from his time in office that has stuck in the public's mind, then it has to be prison works. But since then, the Conservative Party has taken some quite different views on what prison is for and how many people should be in it. Questions that have again been thrust into the spotlight following recent disturbances in English jails. Here's Jenny Coomer with more. Strange ways. Manchester. 27 years ago. Two people died and £60 million of damage was caused in the riots. Overcrowding and harsh conditions were blamed and major changes were brought in. Three years after the Strange Ways riots, the new Home Secretary Michael Howard told his party conference that he wanted to lock more criminals up and keep them in austere conditions. Let's be clear. Prison works. It ensures that we are protected from murderers, muggers and rapists and it makes many who are tempted to commit crime think twice. Michael Howard's prison works speech without doubt hit a nerve and it offered an apparently very powerful answer to the problems that society faced. From then on, the prison population grew. This continued under New Labour, who also wanted to take a tough approach. Crime fell, but when Ken Clark became the Justice Secretary under the coalition government, he turned years of Conservative policy on its head. Too often, prison has proved a costly and ineffectual approach that fails to turn criminals into law-abiding citizens. Since 2010, we've, we've seen a bit of a kind of an ambivalent shift between different justice ministers and different governments. So under the coalition government, you had Ken Clark gently trying to drive the prison population down a little bit. Then his successor, Chris Grayling, showed no interest in that. Under this government, if you commit a crime, you are more likely to be caught and charged. You're more likely to go to prison. You will go there for longer and it will cost the hard-working taxpayer less to keep you there. But under his watch, a series of reports highlighted rising suicide and violence in prisons. Then there was another change when Michael Gove took over the reins. He wanted to bring the focus back to the rehabilitation revolution of Ken Clark's days. It's because I'm a Conservative, I believe that evil must be punished. But it's also because I'm a Conservative and a Christian that I believe in redemption. After the EU referendum, the new Prime Minister, Theresa May, gave Liz Truss the justice brief, and her challenges include overcrowding, understaffing and riots. She's promised the biggest reform of the system in a generation. My starting point is refocusing the system so that everyone is clear that safety and rehabilitation is the purpose of the prison system, setting this out for the first time ever in statute. But some feel the government is still failing to address fundamental issues in the system. Both Labour and Conservative politicians have made the mistake of allowing sentence length to increase. So they are always struggling to catch up. Our prisons have never been resourced to the degree that they need to be to do what all parties want, which is that they should be places of rehabilitation as well as being decent and safe. Soon after the recent riots, two former Home Secretaries and the former Deputy Prime Minister called for the prison population to be halved, to the level it was at before Michael Howard's speech. But the jury's out on how long it would take to achieve this and how much public appetite there is to see this happen. And Michael Howard, author of the Prison Works Policy, is still with us, I'm pleased to say. We heard there from the Prison Reform Trust that says it's been a mistake by both Conservative governments and Labour governments to allow prison sentence length to increase. Is he right? No. Um, look, I, um, you can argue, and I wouldn't strongly dispute, that perhaps the prison population as it is today is a little bit too high. It's right. much higher than it was when I left office. But what this discussion all too often fails to take into account is the relationship between the prison population and crime. 
Now, of course, it's true that the prison population has increased a lot mm. since and, since I was Home Secretary. And recorded crime? Is crime the... Not only recorded crime, crime, according to the British Crime Survey, has fallen by two-thirds. Right. So why is and, there such a high prison population? Well, the, the, because the people who would otherwise be committing the crimes can't commit the crimes because they're in prison. There is often a great confusion. Or they shouldn't be there uh, in the as, first place. No, 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 no. Or for as long, which no, is what the Prison Reform no, Trust no, says. I, well, I don't agree with that. When I said prison works, I never meant that prison works in the sense that it was going to rehabilitate people. But shouldn't um, it be for that? Yes, it should. I'm all for rehabilitation. The trouble is no one has actually found the best way to achieve rehabilitation. And uh, offending, re-offending rates for people who are sentenced in the community, not sent to prison, are also far too high. So rehabilitation, I'm all in favour of it, it's very important, it's a very difficult nut to crack. Meanwhile, when you have serious professional criminals who are wreaking havoc on the community in which they live, you can prevent them from continuing to commit crimes against the community by putting them in prison so that they can't continue to commit those crimes. You say it's a hard nut to crack, but were you really willing to look at the idea of rehabilitation, putting it forefront and centre in the way that Ken Clark would say he tried to do, and perhaps arguably Michael Gove and Liz Truss are trying to do now, whereas you and Chris Grayling were concentrating more on rhetoric. I just put this to you that was more about locking people up punishing people, and rehabilitation was very much a secondary thought. No, I mean, first of all, it certainly wasn't just rhetoric, because the prison population did rise and crime did fall. My main objective was to stop the rise in crime. When I became Home Secretary, I was told that crime had risen by an average of 50% for the previous 50 years, and there was nothing I could do about it. And I was determined to do something about it, and I did, so crime fell by 18% in the four years that I was Home Secretary. Yeah. Now, I was also very keen on improving education. We spent more on education in prisons when I was Home Secretary, because that is one of the keys to rehabilitation. But do you think there's still work? But it's an extremely difficult thing to but achieve. Do you think now, as you say, you think the prison population is too high? No, I didn't. Um, I said I did. I don't know. I mean, uh, I, well, you I said it may be too high. Well, all right, yeah. fair, fair enough. You, you can. Um, we can debate whether yes. it's too high or not. But the, the prison system is now in in some sort of crisis. There are overcrowded jails and understaffing amongst officers, and we've seen the outbreaks of violence. Would you say the prison system, as it is currently constituted, doesn't work anymore? I certainly wouldn't say that. Um, you do need to you do need to build more prison places if the right. population continues to rise. And when I was Home Secretary, we set out a programme for, for building more prisons. So right. I, I entirely accept that. But they haven't come on board, of course. I mean, in 2013, Chris Groening announced that seven prisons were to close and two more partially shut in England. The new ones coming on board aren't coming on until... February and 2020. But new ones are coming on board. Sure, but there's they a massive gap of six or seven years yes. and the prison population is rising. That was a mistake in planning, wasn't it? Well, you've got to try and, and keep the, the rise in places <coughs> in, in, in pace with the rise in the population. But after all, it's the judges who send people to prison. It's not politicians who send people to prison. And it's the judges who determine the length of sentences. All right.